Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Collider Interview Studio at TIFF 2024 at the Cinema Center, brought to you by Range Rover Sport. I'm sitting here with the team behind Edition. Congratulations on your movie. I didn't quite know what I was getting into, and I feel like- I don't think they, we did. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so much of this movie is about getting access to your character's internal world and kind of seeing that come to life before my eyes in this way was, was very impressive. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. So clearly I know what Edition is. Some of our viewers might not, so I'll give you these duties. As the director, would you mind giving a brief synopsis? Uh, sure. <laughs> well, Edition is really, uh, it's based on Tony Jordan's novel, and it's a story about Grace Lisa Vandenberg, who, it, it's really her coming through trauma stories. So it's a romance, of course, you know, it's a, it's a rom-com, but um, it's more than that, it's her coming to terms with how to manage her anxiety and OCD and coming through trauma. Um, but it's a really positive spin on that, uh, which may sound kind of glib, but it's not. Um, she learns throughout the course of the, you know, her story and the, her character arc. She's quite therapy resistant to begin with, and she ends up really because she's um, met Seamus, you know, just you know, incidentally at a supermarket to begin with. <laughs> and she's, you know, they've met again and again and fallen in love over the course of their story. You know, there's a meet cute, obviously, at the beginning of the film. But it, their love story kind of propels her to do something about her life that has become very small. And I think one of the most important things of, um, about the story uh, for me in telling it was to tell a story about somebody that was, you know, celebrating difference and to be really, um, you know, or I'll just circle back a bit and say like she what Seamus's character, what, what he does is he allows Grace to be who she is and accepts her for all of her flaws, all of her differences and loves her for that. And... I think that's when she finally kind of comes to realize that she sort of steps out of the difficulties in her life, you know, and it's so it really it's a story about how love can make you a much, how much, much stronger in a way, you know, for me, I think there's a lot yeah. of that in it. And we worked a lot, you know, to, to, to guide the film in, in that way. Oh, you feel you feel that big time radiating Aww. off the screen from your performances. I wanted to stick with you for a moment longer to talk about Becca, your screenwriter here, because I was reading a little bit about her and I feel like it's it's unusual to get a feature script from someone who doesn't have a traditional screenwriting background. So can you tell me a little bit about her background and why it best suited this story? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I was brought onto the project. This had been a long gestation process. Um, Bruna and Christina, the producers, had had the book for 14 years so it's a real story of you know never giving up and they had started first there was a script they had a different director attached and they had another script that was very different to the one we ended up with and it, it just it wasn't kind of resonating or working yeah and uh, one of the producers from Made Up Stories uh, got Becca involved now Becca had been a journalist and she was an emerging script writer so they had brainstormed and got together and, and Becca had presented what she thought would uh, be a great adaptation of the novel. So she'd done the first draft of that particular one, which was, I guess, well, I think probably about maybe nine or ten years since Bruna and Christina had first optioned the novel. I mean, it's a very successful Australian novel. Uh, and then I came on to the scene. Uh, they once they had that draft and then Becca and I developed the script from there to where it, you know, is now. So, yeah, that was kind of the story behind that. Um, and, and Becca had been, you know, at, had gone to film school and had, you know, as I say, she was an emerging writer, but this is her first 
feature film. So she's incredibly excited about it being at TIFF. Ambitious. Yeah. It's an ambitious story to try to to bring to screen. I, again, there's there's so much about this material that I have to imagine might be difficult for an outsider to really visualize and understand how you would execute. So for the two of you, I am curious, when this opportunity comes your way and you give a first read of the screenplay, what were some of your biggest burning questions in terms of how you were going to bring the story to life to the extent it needed to be? Um, I read the Bruna Papandrea sent me the script. Um, I was on flight with my hundreds of children um, from Los Angeles to Sydney and I was really distracted and dealing with like just dealing with babies and toddlers and and I knew I had to read the script because she sort of wanted a general answer in the next couple of days. Um, And the moment I could really focus on it, it was just earth-shatteringly beautiful. Um, And the character... I've never actually seen um, OCD portrayed like this on film. And the way that it was, I think that everyone breathed life into this character just in the script alone was stunning. Um, And I thought she was very, my character was really quirky and she's very, she's like a mathematician. her, Her life is very ordered. So I just wanted to know, like, what is this tone? How do we strike the tone here? Because we're dealing with quite a heavy subject matter, but it's also a rom-com and the character's really like playful and loud and bubbly and and also hyper intellectual. So I I knew that the first step in nailing the tone would be just talking with Marcel and having a meeting. And that's what we did. I landed in Sydney. A couple of days later, we met. I was like, this is the coolest woman I've ever met. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> She's just got such great taste. Um, and her vision for the for the film was just enticing and exciting. And, and I, I felt real electric energy there. So I said it to Bruno. It was Bruna, a very good cafe meeting. <laughs> yeah, it was. I was like, wow, I'm in. This is, this is brilliant. So, yeah. I love it. How about for you? Well, I was all the way over in the UK, so I couldn't be taken to a cafe <laughs> for, uh, for a croissant. But... Um, but I'd echo a lot of what Teresa said there, really. I think that that often as an actor, the question that you have when you read a script is about tone because it's the thing that's the hardest to discern on the page. And having spoken to Marcel over Zoom, you start to get an idea of that. Similar to, similarly to Teresa, I thought that it was, you know, if, if we're going to call it a rom-com, you know, I think it's quite hard to pin down genre-wise. But yeah. it felt like it was approaching that genre from a different angle, one that I hadn't seen portrayed before. And so then from that point on, for me, what what drew me to the script was, and this sort of sounds kind of counterintuitive, but in Seamus, I think I saw the space to make the character my own. You know, he was r- kind of ambiguous to a degree. And I think that that's, you know, this is very much of a movie about grace. And so you can't, you know, you can't delve into the backstory of every single supporting role, but I felt that I kind of had to, I wanted to do that for Seamus because I think that also what I felt would make it more interesting is, you know, Marcel mentioned earlier that Seamus kind of allows, ultimately allows Grace to be at peace with herself a little more because he accepts her kind of flaws and all, but that's, that's a journey that we take you on and that, and that they both go on. And I think it's that- It's not instant. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, instant. I'm initially that, resistant. <laughs> well, 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 and I think that it was also important that actually within the film, Seamus wasn't this like bastion of consistency it's and not the night. stability. You know, <laughs> yeah, he, yeah. he had to bring his own insecurities to the party. And I think that that's because it's, it's also a film about, I think the differences between the way people present and what's really going on under the surface. And there's none more kind of intense a study of that than the early days of a relationship where you're both trying to put your best foot forward. Mm. You're both trying to give the most perfect Shiny version of yourself. Version. <laughs> and and when that starts to sort of fall apart, you tend to make it, you know, things are a bit amiss with Grace. And rather than thinking there's something wrong with her, he makes it about himself, I think, and thinks that yeah. it's, she's going off Rejecting him. and she's, him. So his insecurities are there as well. He's not this kind of super stoic, like I will be here to guide you to, you know, a more enlightened and calm place. So <laughs> yeah. it, the, the script really, I felt like there was the space to do that. And Marcel was so keen for us to do that and was 
we actively collaborated on all of those aspects. Mm. Of I tell you something really weird because you just brought this up twice. I've stolen your words from the press notes because you mentioned that like there was space for you to bring yourself to the character. And I feel like I feel like this is true with that's me. I'm saying the same well, stuff well, everywhere no, I go. I, I think that's a beautiful way to put something that I try to articulate where it's not like you're making an adaptation. How do you make that person's thing your own? Like finding space in something yeah. in someone else's screenplay is like a really beautiful way well, to say I, it. So I think as well, sometimes you, you, as an actor, you, uh, I've certainly done jobs before where I come away from it and I, I'm like, oh, I, I think I did a good job, but someone else could have done just as good a job or someone else could have done the same thing. And, and but I really felt with this that, oh, Seamus wouldn't, would have been a totally different character had another mm. actor played him. And I got a lot of satisfaction out of that. I mean, it was yeah. really, we, we worked very closely and collaboratively together. We did a lot of ad libbing on a, a, a loads of scenes. We definitely added to what was on the scripted page a, a, a lot. Joe did an enormous amount of work building Seamus off the page into this, you know, breathing life into Seamus and adding nuance and complexity. And and also just, I mean, all you know, loads of people did. Teresa spent an enormous amount of time, you know, researching and delving into Grace. And, and the complexity with Grace's character is that we're not, you're not just showing someone who has, you know, is, is going through a moment where they have mental health challenges or anything like that. It's what you're also doing is showing this really, this complex and nuanced situation where at the same time as, she, as that's difficult, she can hold her own, she's smart, she can go teaching and teach a class of kids and she's fantastic at it. She can be super sexy and jump on someone and you know, lead the way and it's like, man, I want you now. You know, and, she's, <laughs> and she does it, you know, and that's, and that complexity, that up and down, that that was very important to show, yeah. you know. And I think that's again uh, the tone. We found, you talk about tone before. We found the tone of the film, and it's very organic. I mean, I come from a an arts background, and I'm used to painting and sculpting and stuff. So I approach film in a kind, the same kind of way, like a collage almost, yeah. And so for me, I had to find the tone of the film and. And so it becomes a Jonah mashup, really. Mm -hmm. And for me, the tone of the film is it's a psychological romantic dramedy. That's what, if I was going to name it, that's, <laughs> that's what great. I would name it I only want to do them from now on, yeah, psychological yeah. Hey. romantic dramedy. That's yeah, what like I'm going to do. That's exclusively what he's going to be doing. Yeah, but future. I think that's, that's kind of what it is, you know, because we go in and out of, you know, sometimes things are funny and sometimes they're really not. Yeah. So yeah. we wanted to ride those out and luckily, you know, and Marcel was we very generous, amazing. I think, with us because mm -hmm. we threw in a lot of unscripted moments and there is like she really embraced. I have a very quirky, dorky side to myself, all my little weirdness. Like she pulled all of that out of me and encouraged it. And so we see this grace that maybe that wasn't on the page, but you really allowed us to find like the, the color that makes this these characters unique. Well, also about like that that being a really key stage in a in a blossoming relationship. That that moment where actually the pretense drops and you're able to kind of like relax and goof yourself. around in your underpants yeah. and like and, and and those inhibitions go a little bit. And we, we I guess we had to find that as like Pete, obviously Teresa and I were getting to know, we didn't know each other before we made this film. So we're getting to know each other as we're shooting and, and that environment was created by Marcel with, you know, like you say, the t time's important. You need to be given time as well as permission to try things out. And, um, but there was just a really supportive atmosphere where you, if something didn't work, it didn't matter. Yeah, you know, that's you right. You just try something else and it's fun. You don't feel like nervous about it or you don't feel like an idiot. If, yeah, if we played a lot. Out. We had a lot of play. And some of my favourite <laughs> moments in the film are the moments that we just we just tried stuff, like bold, quirky, left of centre stuff, and then they're in the movie. And they're my favourite little points in the film and it's it's just gorgeous. I love it. There's a moment where I'm like walking over to him and instead of just sitting down, I just sort of collapse on top of it. I just sort of do a collapse. I right? love it. I love and that. And my moment. character has no <laughs> boundaries with physical space. She just she doesn't care what she does to the other person, and that's a very unique trait. Um, and we just lent into it because I was like, oh, I can be like that. 
Fantastic. We'll put that on screen. <laughs> we'll say the three of you have like impeccable rhythm just sitting here and talking about what you may. I, I just feel how much you love it. And yeah. that's well, really I love cool them. That, you know, these guys were just amazing. <laughs> they were super. I mean, it was a super joyous experience to do. I mean, and I must say, you know, like, I mean, in what instance does anybody have a full on panic attack in a massive restaurant and then race outside and have crazy sex? Al fresco. I mean, you know, like we She's just did. We just did all of these things, and we could and we had throw them up against the wall. We had a laugh, but you know, I think in the long run, <laughs> the, one of up. the most important <laughs> things was the heart and soul at the center of it. Is heart, is it? You know, and um, and respect, because when you get right down to it, all of the characters in the film had had you know at the base level respect for each other, even though the family can be kind of you know misbehaving but again that was a because you know anxiety plays out in all these different ways right so you know while grace has anxiety that she's dealing with that presents itself as ocd she also has you know like her sister obviously has anxiety that manifests as being an ultra control freak yeah, <laughs> about yeah. everything you know well, so it feels, it feels like everyone's trying to make their peace with something in yeah. this film you know you've got um you know, you've got Larry who's trying to sort of make peace with her sexuality, mm, that's sort of, right. which isn't sort of widely known among the other characters. You've got, like you say, you've got Jill who has feels like she's become this a bit of a stick in the mud because of this role she's had mm. to take on of keeping this slightly erratic family together. To together, that's right. With her daughter. Yeah, and, there's yeah. this like central trauma that still defines all of their lives that they've not kind of worked through yet. Mm, you know, it's right. like everyone's trying to sort of make peace with themselves. Yeah. in this film to some degree. Which is beautiful and such a human experience. It's so true. I want to keep you here all day. I'm not allowed. You <laughs> your movie. Right. I will just latch on to the word that you brought into the equation here, R respect, because you make a really entertaining, like warm film that is a fun romance. It's got great comedic beats, but the fact that you do all that and still have respect for, in particular, what Grace is going through is, is really something else. It's very impressive. So oh, I'm going to say you. huge congratulations on addition. Thank and thank you, you for very sharing much. some of your experience with thank us. You. Thank, thank you. Thanks, thanks for, for having us. Having us.